you want to tell mommy how good this meal is? Okay, 10 stars is the most. Yeah. And guess how many I'll give it? For this fried chicken. It's like the crispiness for that. Yeah. And the taste is like that. Boom! <laughs> wow. Okay, all right. Wait, coffee. Okay, that's one thing about vlogging in Geylang is that the traffic is extremely loud. Because the stall is next to the main road lah, unfortunately. Hi, you're watching Greg's Big Eats and I'm pretty sure you know where we are right now. I'm at the corner of uh, Sims Avenue and Geylang Lorong 21A to talk about the famous Combs Wantan Mee. Which can be argued is the best old school wantan mee in Singapore. Kung's wonton noodles harks back to an old school style which is so culturally incorrect that not many wonton noodle hawkers dare to serve it so boldly these days. I'm referring to the outlandish amounts of lard in the sauce at Kung's. Health experts might frown about it, but foodies in Singapore absolutely love it. The business was started by a 76 year old in 2021, Kung Boon Kong, who immigrated from Indonesia. Okay, I got the history of the business a little wrong here, so let me redo that bit. The business was started by 76-year-old Kong Boon Kong, who emigrated from Indonesia as a child, correct? And he worked as a stall assistant at a wonton noodle stall at Sen Loan Eating House, Gelang Lorong 12, when he was just 16 years old. During the 1964 race riots in Singapore, the stall was forced to close, so Boon Kong took out a big loan of $200 to take over the business. After many decades, he shifted to Geylang Lorong 13 in 2000 because of increased rentals, then to his current location at a coffee shop at Geylang Lorong 21A in 2013. Okay, bye. Hello, Liang Pan. One red and one white. One red and one white. Ah, So I just came back from the stall and the ordering is very very fast. It took about what? Two minutes, three minutes. They give you a number and so you just need to wait lah. So uh, it opens at 8 a.m. It's now 9.15 or so. 9, 9.12 lah. So they've served about 35 orders or so lah. Now I took the green chilli and the soy sauce which is right here. In this stall it is incredibly important. I will tell you why uh, when the noodles come. When you actually come to this coffee shop, right, the smell itself is actually quite amazing. Because you can actually smell the lard aroma wherever you walk in the coffee shop, when you're sitting down, when you're walking to actually uh, get your order. On every table emanating from the stall, it's amazing, really amazing. Oh, 48. My turn soon. So I got my order, two plates of wonton mee. I think in about, um, the waiting time is actually relatively short. It's about 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes max. When I last reviewed it, they've actually increased the price of the wonton mee. It used to be $4, now it's uh, $4.50. And that was in the space of a year, maybe. So uh, it's probably because of COVID-19, I'm guessing. Okay, so uh, let's just try the noodles first. Eh? Freaking amazing. Once you tuck into a plate, you understand what the hype is all about. Lah. The tea is a sauce which has an incredibly lard rich, very, very, very slightly sweet chili, slightly savory flavor. And it's only comprised of like three ingredients. So it's really just soy sauce. Um, this custom made um, chili sauce which they have, which is where the sweetness comes from. Lah. It's very, very slight as I say. And a very, very, very generous amount of lard oil. And it's made with high-grade egg noodles, lah, which adds to the richness. The delicateness of the sauce is really the key because if you eat it alone, it tastes good. And you can actually taste the egg noodles when you tuck into them. When you add the char siu, the wontons of the vegetables, the flavour of the dressed noodles don't over-dominate. And you can still taste their inherent flavours instead of just the noodle sourcing, as it very often does in a dish like wonton mee. Let me taste the noodles again. Mm, okay. Funny spring in, but if you talk to a lot of the older hawkers, right, they say that the noodles used to be spring in the past. Because in the old days, they used to use boric acid. 
to actually firm up the noodles. Uh. But unfortunately, it's an ingredient which has been banned in Singapore uh, for many, many years, many decades. In, because it was found to be hazardous to health in large quantities. That's the only compromise uh, to this um, very old school, traditional one time we taste at the store. The other highlight is the char siu. I'll show you a piece. Oh, you know, it's starting to rain. Okay, the light's not fantastic, but it'll, it'll have to do, like, okay? So, yes, trying the char siu again. Freaking amazing. The texture is very, very on point. Nicely soft, with still a little bit of chew, and it's moist. And then it's got this very nice, sweet, savoury um, flavour to the taste. La. The taste profile is very balanced. Um, it's not too sweet, it tilts a little bit more towards the savoury side. The char siu is actually um, store made, and it's slow roasted on site with charcoal on a daily basis. And it's also sliced thicker than usual. It's not completely thin, la. you know, there's actually some thickness to it. You get a fair mix of fatty and lean pieces in every plate. The ratio of which really depends on your luck. Really. So the noodle portions are fairly generous for the money. And you also get some veg as well. The classic wonton mee veg la, in every bowl. Crunchy. The lardiness, for some people, it might get a little bit overwhelming. Which is why you add the green chilli. And that's why the green chilli makes sense here. So you pair with the noodles. See what it tastes like. Adds a bit of saltiness, a bit of sourness, green chilli flavour. Cuts through the lard a little bit. Very nice. The pickled green chilli helps to cut through the greasiness of the dish. It isn't usually the case at other wonton noodle stalls because when they cut back on the lard for supposed health reasons, there isn't much richness for the pickled green chilli to actually cut through in the first place. Now of course, another reason why you eat here is because they give out free flow lard pieces. So crunchy fried pork lard pieces are available if you so wish, but they are not automatically given out. So request it during your order or you can just grab a spoon and take some. Very crunchy, very good. I'm always amazed whenever I come here. The food is just absolutely spot on. Now talking about the soup. In the old days, the soup version of Kung's wonton noodles was actually the highlight as it was made with, you know, the usual like ikan bilis, pork bones, the people and, and scallops. That's the unusual one. So, when it's served, some light soy sauce is actually added to every bowl to boost the flavour a bit. It's nice. It's very homely, nice and rounded, not too salty. But I've uh, tasted more robust, complex versions. Kung soup is a little on the lighter side. I'm not too sure whether they changed the recipe la, or that's the way it has always been. But whatever the case, uh, I would recommend the dry version. La, you know. The soup comes with three wontons and it's very nice. Mm. Nice slippery skin with a decent amount of well-seasoned minced pork filling. Okay, um, I'm going to switch over to the black sauce one. Another whole bowl here. Mm. So Kong does sell a Malaysian style wonton mee as well, where some dark soy sauce is actually mixed in. Mm. There's this extra sheen of uh, earthy sweetness on top, slight dark soy sauce flavour, but it's not overly sweet. It's very nice, it's very rounded. Compared to other Malaysian style wonton mee offerings in Singapore, right? If you like it sweet, this is not the dish for you, lah, obviously. But if you like it just with just a bit of that rounded sweetness inside, right, then it's fine. I would say that it's a very good option simply because there's such a generous amount of lard taste and aroma in every dish. Okay, finished. So that was a look at uh, Kung's wonton mee, which is arguably the best wonton mee in Singapore. La. If people dispute it, I'm pretty sure everybody will agree that it is at least top five. Okay, before I end, I want to sort of like uh, talk about a fair warning. La. Because the business is actually in the midst of being taken over by the next generation. Boon Kong San, Bernard and his daughter Sharon. And because of COVID, right, the business has been aggressively expanding la, into like uh, ready-to-eat frozen meals, 
halal versions, online delivery. But if history is any judge to go by, the quality of food tends to suffer when businesses choose to go this route because it loses its individual touch. Akung's also opened another outlet at Jurong East Gem Shopping Mall in mid-2020. It was started by Boon Kong's son, Bernard, who uses his father's original recipes. But unfortunately, reviews are showing that the outlet can't quite maintain the same standard as how the original stall does it yet. I mean, I personally tried the stall and I wouldn't recommend it now. That said, I'll do a retaste maybe a few months later, a year later, to see if the food actually improves. So the long story is that you can still get the original and great taste of Kong's, but only at this outlet. Because the founder Boon Kyung and his original team are all here. Lah. Still running the store, still serving customers and so on and so forth. But realistically, he can only do this for maybe a handful of years more. Lah. Because he is already 76 years old. Lah. As for the quality under the next generation, well, that's a million dollar question. Lah. But as they all say, it's always good to have hope. So thanks for watching another episode of Grace Bee Eats, where we eat through the whole of Singapore. If you like this episode, give a like, subscribe, comment below, turn on the notifications bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.